This Canadian was strangled by her father because she refused to wear a headscarf. This Italian had her throat slit by her dad while she was held down by her uncles. This American was run over by her father in his Jeep Cherokee. These sisters were shot by their father in a New York taxi. This woman was shot by her brother in broad daylight. They may have defied the wishes of their parents or adopted Western ways or tried to leave Islam. So they were killed. Many were tortured first. The precise number of honor attacks worldwide is unknown because many are not reported or are reported as accidents or suicides. But a new report says 3,000 honor attacks were committed last year in Britain alone. Part of what changed my ideas because... Norwegian Hege Storhaug left journalism to devote her life to helping the victims of honor violence after doing a story about a Norwegian girl who was forced to marry her cousin from Pakistan. And I was so shocked when she said, for example, my parents were willing to kill me if I didn't enter this marriage to protect their own honor. These Pakistani women had acid thrown in their faces by their husband's family because they did not bring a big enough dowry to the marriage. Although honor violence is sometimes committed by Hindus and Sikhs, it is usually a Muslim on Muslim crime. A study found that 91% of honor killings were committed by Muslims. Women who break with traditional Islam often face grave danger. For them, a member who goes out of the sect or the group or the community is a traitor. This young woman came to study in Paris after growing up in a Muslim nation. And because she rejects Islam and Islamic rules about women, she says the only way she could ever safely return to her homeland is if she were to pretend to be a traditional submissive Muslim woman. It would be safe if I will play the game. There is a game. So if you want to go back, you have to apologize for living. You have to apologize for being yourself. You have to apologize for wanting freedom. You have to apologize for everything and say, yes, I'm sorry, I'm coming back to this slavery. I'm a slave, I'm happy to be a slave. That's how it works. Gina Khan has been a national spokeswoman in Britain against honor violence and Islamic radicalism. She left an abusive arranged marriage and had to move to a secret location because of threats. You're at risk if you speak out. You can be attacked. I'm aware of that. but. There comes a time when silence becomes a sin, a guilt. When a Muslim decides to leave Islam, the situation can range from complicated to deadly. Some are so burned out on God, they want nothing to do with religion for the rest of their lives. We're blurring the faces at this Spanish church for ex-Muslims because leaving Islam can be deadly. It is small in part because the pastor says there's so much social control within Muslim communities in Europe that leaving Islam is simply not an option many Muslims take seriously. I have my community. I have to live and to integrate and belong and so on. And I cannot leave that. So um, they don't have the option in their minds to be Christians. And honor violence is only part of the enormous control that Islam tries to exert over the minds of women and young people. After years of Western governments denying that honor violence was a problem, laws are being passed to stop it. But within Muslim communities in Europe and America, women often still do not have full rights, and their lives are still at risk. In real life, women are, are treated like half-humans. Legally speaking, they are uh, as minors all their lives. Do you think that most of them are happy? Have you seen their faces? They're miserable. Dale Hurd, CBN News, reporting from Europe.